I'm here in Cupertino, California for Drive Electric Week and the main attraction today is the new Nissan Leaf booth. It got the most attention today and rightfully so. It is an exciting car as you probably saw my video from uh, uh, last week, my first impression of the Nissan Leaf unveiling. I'm really turning around. I'm becoming kind of a fan. I think this is now a, a very acceptable and appealing car for those who can't necessarily afford a Tesla, uh, which is most Americans and most people in the world, but want to try to drive an electric car and and without any kind of a range anxiety or or kind of reservation so there are still a lot of issues uh, that they uh, have to figure out I know they're coming up with a longer range next year that they have to solve the problem of the infrastructure which Tesla already has so there are quite it's a long way to go but as somebody who really really hated the Nissan Leaf the first generation I'm excited about this one so let's go in uh, check it out and talk to Nissan representative and and see what uh, what they have to say so this is the first time the Bay Area has a look at the new Leaf um, what is the feedback so far what are you guys are excited about as far as presenting it to us to the public to the rest of the world so the leaf was uh, unveiled globally just last week about 10 days ago uh, we've had really good feedback so far we're at a national drive electric week event here in uh, in northern california and uh, people are pretty excited about the extended range we're, we're reaching about 150 miles on our, our new battery pack and there's next year there will be an upgraded version with an even longer range is that correct that's right. For uh, model year 2019, we're going to see a 60 kilowatt hour battery, which will take us uh, about 50% more than today. So if you do the math, uh, it's about 225 miles plus. Okay. So we're talking about comparison. Uh, we're talking about an, what I call is an acceptable range for uh, at the very least daily driver that, you know, uses this car for their primary driving sure. purposes. Yeah, you're reaching a, we're reaching a much bigger market now, right? 150 miles uh, through our research is showing that uh, roughly 95% of consumers are see that as an acceptable range. I agree. I, I think I think 200 plus is 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 perfect. You know, uh, definitely acceptable. Okay, so now the range is not the only thing that you guys change in the car. The look, I, you know, I, my, my viewers are are know that I am a leave hater all these years. So I think it's I, I I have to give Nissan credit, right? It's the first mass production car. They took a chance back in the day where they, you know you didn't have to have compliance cars. Sure. They took a chance on the Leaf. Uh, it 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 went on the market. It was the only one for a while. Now it's the largest selling car to this point, right? Yeah. So I always give them a credit for that for taking a chance on that. Um, but then you look, I like it. You guys are actually making me a fan of the car now. What has been a response from other people as far as the new design is concerned? Well, we like it a lot too. Uh, essentially, uh, back when EVs first came out, it was, it was uh, owning an EV was kind of a, uh, a statement, right? You wanted to make a statement, and that's, that's kind of where we were going with the Leaf. You know, we wanted to make it stand out a little bit, look a little funky. Well, now that uh, EV, EVs are coming, becoming more mainstream, the everyday person wants to own them, uh, we kind of softened the, uh, the edges a little bit, made it a little bit more mainstream. and uh, A lot, actually, I think. Okay, that's your words, not mine. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's more of a mainstream car. It doesn't look as funky as before. So uh, I think that's going to help us in sales. I, I mean, I, I totally agree. I think the look and the range is what people are looking for generally in an electric car, right? They don't want to feel like they're driving some weird car that, that everyone says, oh, look at that freak, right? Driving. A, I, I think this looks good. This looks like any other car in this, in this class. And they can now don't have, they don't have to have a range anxiety, at least, you know, with this range and definitely a range that's coming up. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the new features. Tell me what you guys are excited about and what the customers are excited about. You know, there's some self-driving features, e-pedal and so forth. Tell, tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. So some of the features that we're most excited about are, uh, standard automatic emergency braking so that's a, across all trim lines uh, we're also we also have a feature called uh, pro pilot assist that gives you a it's still a hands-on but it's an assist feature uh, it's a hands-on feature that lets you uh, the car is self-centering in the lane and also automatic uh, cruise control so it's a step towards autonomy it is not a fully autonomous system but it's it's moving that direction and it kind of takes fatigue off of driving Speaking of, and I appreciate, sorry, 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 but I appreciate that honesty. I, I, I think that it's, it's important to present it as a, an assistant rather than saying this is a self-driving car. Therefore, the expectations are exactly what the car has to offer, which is honest. Right. Yeah, we, uh, we think that too. You know, um, <clears throat> again, we're not to the uh, fully autonomous point yet, uh, but we're making strides in that direction. 
it's definitely a, a fatigue re uh, reducing features. So you, you mentioned e-pedal earlier, that's a one pedal feature. Uh, essentially it lets you modulate one, one pedal. You don't have to keep going back and forth between brake and acceleration. And uh, the, uh, the braking on e-pedal is aggressive enough that when you lift off the gas completely, it'll bring you to a full stop and let you hold it a stop. So at a stoplight, you don't have to then switch pedals. You just take your feet off both pedals and you're stuck there. So I don't fully get it. So what is the idea behind it not using the brake pedal at all? Is it easier to drive? Is it, you know, tell me a little bit more about that. Re our research kind of suggested that it was, uh, you know, another area where we could kind of reduce fatigue on, on commutes and things like that. So uh, the brake pedal is still there for emergency stops, but for the most part, you should never have to touch the brake pedal. And it's just kind of eases the, the burden of driving, so to speak. And I'm assuming the, uh, just like with Tesla, the, you won't have to change your brakes every few years or so. It should last much longer than on a regular car. Exactly. Uh, it's really going to depend on driving characteristics and how you operate your car, but there's no reason the brakes uh, should, shouldn't last more than 100,000 miles. So let's switch topics a little bit and talk about charging. This is something that every electric car customer is concerned about, obviously. Where do you charge, especially new ones? Um, where do you guys suggest that your customers charge home versus work versus shopping centers what kind of charge you know what kind of charging network you're kind of uh, working with maybe or or recommending how is this supposed to happen tell us a little bit about that so we recommend charging at home I, in an ideal situation you'd have a level two charger plugged into your garage however I, explain level two because not everybody knows what level two chargers are right level two is uh, 220 that's uh, 200, 220 volts it's uh, power that you've got running at your house right now um, your normal receptacles at home are 110, but your box is capable of putting out 220. So that's um, something that you could tap into at home theoretically, easy enough. Um, it does require the purchase of an extra box. You can get those for about $500 online, and then installation is going to vary. But if you've got your electric box in your garage and you want to install the, the level 2 charger right there, $500 or so. So all in, you could have a home charging system for uh, $1,000. Fair enough. And that would get you, uh, so at that level, you could charge your car, a new leaf, uh, so, to, uh, so to speak, in about six hours. Okay. So now, going back to charging networks and where people should charge, you recommend at home level to charging. Um, what about, you know, when they travel, uh, where they go and stay somewhere for a long time? Uh, they're charging networks right now. Are you guys planning to work with them? And what is the plan on maybe charging that's a little bit faster? So we work uh, with all the charging networks. Uh, charge point and uh, ev go and those guys and nissan's really big on uh, helping to build the infrastructure we fully believe that building the infrastructure is going to help sell cars and we're all about building the ev infrastructure so much so that we've got uh, every new dc fast charger that we put in or have a part in putting in we make sure it's double corded so it's got the chatamo charger and the ccs charger so our cars don't even use CCS, but we believe in EVs so much that we make sure that each uh, new charging station has got both both uh, standards. Okay, excellent. Um, tell us about uh, what's what, once you get inside the interior. What is the biggest upgrade of the interior that the customers will see? It's just got a full suite of uh, Nissan infotainment now. So you've got just the upgraded telematics. You can uh, now you can lock your car from afar via your cell phone and. Um, just an overall, you know, redesign of the inside. It's just a full kind of rethinking of the inside. Better integration with your phone? Better, better integration, that's right. So there's, there's a full suite of Nissan Connect apps that let you geofence the car. If you send your kid out, you can get alerts if they're going too fast or they go outside a certain zone. That kind of stuff is, is pretty neat, and we, we kind of think it's cool. It is if you're a parent, not when you're a kid, right? Exactly. Well... You'll get there. You can get your own car one then. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Those, those, uh, Fair enough. Those um, let's talk about the future, right? So this is a pretty major step. I mean, the, the original Leaf came out in 2010, right? right. Um, this is the first refresh and a big one. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the future. I mean, we're obviously, you know, guys, you know, now starting on the, you know, self-driving features and a longer range. Where do you see this is going? Where do you see the Nissan brand is going in a whole industry as far as, you know, switching to electric and, and adding all these cool features that kind of come with electric cars? nowadays sure. so the next step is uh, within a year we're gonna see that 60 kilowatt hour battery we'll see that about this time next year um, beyond that we're right now we're kind of researching what other EVs could be beyond leaf in our lineup um, no official announcements at this point but we're all in on EVs we've sold almost 300 EVs worldwide and uh, we fully fully believe in the electrification of, uh, of vehicles so 
there's definitely more to come. And do you know where you guys stand as far as the uh, uh, rebates, federal rebates? Um, I know there's a limit of 200000 uh, per manufacturer. Where are you at right now? Because people will be obviously counting on that, especially for the first year or so. Of course. So right now we're at about 112000 sold in the U.S. Um, it does start to step down at 200000 sales. We're expecting that to happen uh, in the next three to four years. So if you're in the market for a LEAF now or a new EV, you're in good shape. All right, so let's talk about price. I think this is one of the most important things for people to consider. Tell us a little, a little bit about the pricing right now, what it's going to be with, uh, with uh, more features that people want to add, and of course, as we talked about, rebates. So yeah, we're pretty excited to say that the, uh, the new LEAF starts under $30,000 before any rebates. So that's uh, $670, $670 excuse me, uh, less than it was last year. So you get more range, more features uh, for less money than last year. How often do you, do you hear that in, in today's economy? I think you're making it really hard on your dealerships to get rid of that 2017 model right now. There's some pretty good incentives on those. So okay. They won't have any trouble. Um, but beyond that, yeah, we've got, uh, we think we've got a pretty aggressive price, uh, price point. Good range of 150 miles uh, on one charge. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of an EV for everybody. If, if anybody's in the market now, it's, it's, it's at a much more approachable price point and, uh, it's, it's out there for anybody who's, who's interested in a new car and, a, and an EV. So we're talking about starting price about 30 grand. We're talking about incentives from federal and in states like California. We don't even know what they're going to be next year. It looks like it might be significant. Um, and, um, on top of that, obviously you guys actually bargain once in a while too, right? I like, like Tesla and so, but, um, so it, it, we're talking about an affordable electric car exactly. for the masses, and that's what it is starting now. Exactly. Yeah. We're again, we're pretty excited. This this car we think are, is going to sell very well, and it's uh, it's very attainable for anybody. I know you're not doing test drives today, which I was kind of disappointed about. I'm, I'm going to get behind the wheel, but I, I, I won't drive it. But um, you guys are having sign up lease for customers who just want to check it out, you know, and, and drive it. Tell us a little bit more about that. So uh, today uh, at the National Drive Electric Week event here in Northern California, we're uh, offering a, a program called Drive and Discover. You can also find it on NissanUSA.com. Uh, basically what it is, is uh, it's a concierge uh, delivery program. Uh, so you'll be able to, and that's for test drives. Sign up, provide your information. Once we get closer to that window of when you're uh, going to do a test drive, we'll bring it to your house or office. Last question. When can we buy one? Right after the new year, it's uh, it's going. This uh, leaf for the U.S. is manufactured in Tennessee. They're going to start ma uh, production here in just a couple of weeks, and they'll be hitting dealers in January. All right. Well, so fair enough. I I, I think we got a pretty good information. I think uh, this is exactly what I was expecting from the car. Um, I, I'm not overwhelmed by the interior. It's 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 all right. It's it's acceptable. Um, like I said, I like the improvement, a major improvement for the outside of the car. I think that's what's going to start driving a lot of people in there and of course 150 mile range it's not you know perfect yet I, I, you know uh, they will have a 200 plus range next year and i think that's uh, also acceptable the deadline it's not like five years down the road so i'm excited to see that um we didn't get to uh, test drive it today nobody could um they are scheduling those for next month and i'm looking forward to that but other than that you know uh, definitely comment in the comment section below i'd like to uh, hear what you guys have to say what do you think about this car and what do you think that they can improve uh, but i really think that they're going to be able to appeal to the entry market to the uh, uh, new electric uh, car owners and I'm excited about it. So that's it for me uh, here in California. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.